but let's uh, let's begin. Uh, so we'll have time uh, to discuss the more important things than the iPad settings. Uh, thanks everybody here for coming and uh, people on the wall, uh, Zoom people, you're right here, so you we see you. Um, if you want to turn your videos on, we'll see your faces as well. So that would be really nice. We see Phil, that's good. Uh, and we're going to have this discussion with you uh, while uh, the speakers will sit here and we'll have a discussion with you guys right there. So I'll just do a very, very quick introduction uh, to our, our uh, colloquium today. Hi, Anu. And um, just say that I'm very happy to have this here in, in Bochum. We worked very hard to bring this sofa here and it came. The sofa is here and I think it's a, it's a great success. So uh, already we're on the right track. Um, so I'll start by, just by briefly um, outlining the, the subject and we'll jump right in and we have our first speaker for today. Uh, so there's this book called The Age of Empathy and we're gonna talk about it today. And it's a book by a famous psychologist and primatologist called Franz De Waal. And De Waal states in the book, greed is out, empathy is in. He's talking about today. And it seems today, especially in the 21st century, that there is a growing trend among many scholars from many, many disciplines that place empathy at the center of the debate on human psychology, education, ethics, economics, environmental justice, and political solidarity, and more and more. Now, I've said this to you before, if you've been to my lecture on, on empathy uh, a few weeks ago, open amazon.com. I challenge you guys also on the Zoom because you're next to the computer. So open amazon.com and search for a book with the term empathy in their title, and you'll find more than 15,000 books. And these are books that have been published in the last two decades. So it seems that everybody is into empathy, and empathy is indeed, as Deval says, the grand theme of our time. Now, when a concept becomes so saturated and so mainstream, and uh, I've shown you uh, a quote by Barack Obama, for instance, that says that our problem in our society today is a lack of empathy. So when people like Obama say things, we know that's mainstream, right? So when a concept becomes so mainstream and, and overused, there always comes a time to reflect and reassess its weaknesses and strength. And this is what we're here to do, right? So this is what we're here to do today in our Empathy and Society Colloquium, to engage with empathy, particularly with its hyperpolysemy and to reevaluate its potential applications in several fields, some of which are social and cultural psychology, ethics, politics, and psychoanalytic psychotherapy, as we will uh, see today. Now, about the talks, they're going to be fun, uh, unlike many other uh, conferences that you might have attended. I know, speakers, I'm putting a lot of, of pressure on you, but uh, Already the format is gonna be fun because there's gonna be no paper presentations. So nobody's gonna read the paper. It's not gonna happen. Excellent already. I see the crowd is delighted. So there's no paper presentations. There will be these discussions which are sort of a live um, improvised form of discussions, right? Uh, between um, yours truly, me, uh, the interested, uh, let's say, person making questions and the speakers. Um, this is basically an opportunity for me to invite experts uh, from all over the world uh, to talk to me about their field of expertise and allow me to probe them with questions. And you're enjoying this kind of voyeuristically enjoying this uh, little circus that we're gonna have here. So this means that each, each discussion will take about 50 minutes. So we also give a long time for the speakers to say whatever's on their mind. Yeah, we'll see where we get to. So there's about 50 minutes to do that. And then about 30 minutes uh, where you guys here and the people uh, on Zoom uh, can ask questions and actually engage in the discussion uh, with the speakers. 
So I please I ask um, everybody to raise their hand when they have a question. This also means uh, raising your hand virtually. When you see us facing this on the video, you'll know we're looking at you Zoom people. So just know we're paying attention to you. Uh, so raise your hand um, and um, let us know that you want to speak. So that's that's about it. What's on the menu? I'll just uh, briefly say what's, uh, what we're going to do today. So we're going to begin with Roland Boltz. We'll initiate our debate on empathy uh, by discussing the language and metaphors of empathy. Uh, language is very important uh, in order for us to think about empathy. And we'll see a very interesting argument that uh, Roland will make about empathy being a form of analogy making. Uh, after Roland, we'll delve into the origin of the notion of contagion in the study of empathy. And together with Clint Burnham, also in person here, uh, we will unravel the inner workings of empathic contagion through the function of contagion in the dissemination of the plague, something that Clint has been working on in the past two years. We will then have a long lunch break. Uh, so everyone here, please join us, uh, Zoom people have your own lunch, and we'll, re <laughs> we'll reconvene here uh, to have a very interesting discussion. This is very close to my heart uh, between uh, Elizabeth Shepard and Brett Heisman. Both are experts in uh, autism research field, and they will discuss the difficulties in addressing empathy in the elaboration of autism. And we will try and see what we can learn or what can only be learned about empathy uh, from autistic people. So that's going to be quite fascinating as well. Um, next up, we will discuss the problematic uh, of empathy in, uh, uh, let's say, um, particular forms of empirical research with uh, Phil Langer right here uh, on the Zoom. Yes. And we'll provide some examples from Phil's work. And we'll see, we'll see actually. Uh, how we can actually provide a, a different take on work, on interviews, and these kind of qualitative research uh, schemes uh, that don't uh, partake in this textbook form of empathy between interviewer and interviewees. And we'll see what's the potential uh, for these kinds of new uh, frameworks of uh, qualitative research. And finally, we will talk with uh, Razak Khan. I don't know if he's here. He'll join us very soon. Uh, Razak will uh, discuss the decolonization of the notion of empathy, trying to critique it, but also offer an alternative uh, to it, basing himself on a new notion, a notion that he uh, deduces from uh, some of his work with uh, refugees uh, from Iraq, if I'm not mistaken, but we'll, we'll, we'll see exactly uh, what kind of work Razak did in order to provide us with a certain alternative, a conceptual alternative that is, um, let's say, uh, draws from the global south. So we'll see about that. Razak will close things up and that will be our day, right? So we'll finish at around uh, six. And at that time, we will probably have no more empathy left for those discussing empathy, but that's good. We'll go to sleep and it will be better so hopefully uh we will assemble our conclusions into some kind of a written form we'll have the recordings uh of the sessions uh, but hopefully we'll also uh, produce uh, some more so i hope we'll have a fruitful day thank you for coming thank you for joining on zoom and um yeah let's let's begin